Well, we've been at this since about 2014. Um, in 2013, the fishery was declared a disaster. Uh, and since then, we, we, when we started, we really knew nothing about it. We didn't even know what, what was causing the problem. And over this time, we've been accumulating uh, all sorts of information on what causes it, how, where it is, when it is, uh, does it uh, cause mortality as it kill shrimp, uh, what's the relationship with the fishery. Uh, all, we, all of these things are the data that we've been collecting in these years. And I think that we're finally uh, at a point where there's enough data coming in that we know enough to start being able to put together uh, a comprehensive understanding of what's going on. And that's what's going to lead us, those, that new understanding, that level of it, it's taken us that long, is, what we're, uh, is what's enabling us to perhaps really now start to think about, is there any way we can predict this, what, how bad it's going to be from year to year, like a weather forecast. Can we make forecasts about uh, the degree, the magnitude, and the, the impact of Black Hill and start putting those into, to, into sort of useful products that we can use to help manage the fishery in this new time when Black Hill is here to stay. And one of the predictors that comes out that appears to be quite important uh, is not necessarily weather or a specific, you know, what temperature it is today, but the, but the changing climate. And in particular, and we don't understand the mechanism fully, what we see is that warmer, the warmer the winters are, the worse the fishery yields are the next year. And uh, we believe that that's, that relationship holds in the years since Blackgill first appeared, which was about 1996 with the first official report. Um, but since about the late 90s, early 2000s, that correlation um, is apparent. It's not apparent in the data before that. So we think it's, it's related to Black Hill, although, again, the information is a little bit circumstantial still. But climate, particularly warmer winters, which is what we've been experiencing here. I'm out of the water. <laughs> Yet. I mean, there's not a lot we can do to cure uh, a problem that's as widespread and out in the open and in a wild, in a wild fishery. Uh, really, we're going to have to adapt. adapt, And adapting to it means that being able to make some predictions about it, the stability. So in terms of the industry, in terms of saving the industry or uh, helping the industry, what would we think would be really useful is to just have good predictions. Just like we're not going to solve weather, we're not going to change weather. But if we know when a hurricane is coming, we can we can really uh, sort of mitigate some of the problems that happen. And I think maybe that's not the best analogy, but uh, it's something like working with these problems. These are problems that are not going to go away. There are problems that uh, this is one example of, of uh, many, many kinds of problems. And they really require us to uh, have these sort of long-term data sets to keep our eye on the ball, so to speak. We're not going to solve it, go away, and, and just move on. And so I think it's very important, uh, and in this video that you're producing now is, is an example of that, to keep this uh, topic fresh and to continue to keep an eye on it and understand it because if there's one thing that's true across the board is that in our times is that everything is changing and this is one of those